Hello, everybody. Welcome to the world's greatest Bronze Age comic book podcast, Flea Market Fantasy. I'm your co-host, Mike Allen. As always, I'm joined by... Michael Dell of the LCS Hockey Radio Show. That's right. And guess what this week is? It's the continuation of the fourth annual Shocktober. Wow. We've been doing this four years now? Well, yes, because we did our first Shocktober, like, starting at episode eight. So that's one, two... Three and this is our fourth. Hell, isn't that funny? Yeah. Cause I remember when we started the show. I said, "Ah, we'll get four weeks out of it, five weeks." Yeah. We're still there. <laughs> How about that? You never know. Hey, we got to apologize right at the top though. Before anything else might go, my audio has been terrible the last two weeks. But hopefully, we figured it out. Hopefully, hopefully, yes. Yeah. If not, nothing we can do about it. That's right. Okay. All right. You get what you pay for, is what we're saying. You exactly. Yeah. So all right. Uh, so, Mike, yeah, what did you pick this week for Shocktober? Well, I did a little search of the scariest DC horror stories of all time. And this one <laughs> popped up on the list. This is House of what? Mystery number 294. And to be honest, out of these four stories, I don't remember which one's supposed to be scary. But uh, Are there four yeah. stories? I only remember three. Are there four? Because they Maybe all blended together. So three. I, don't know. I think one of them is like a page long. I don't know if it counts. But we'll oh, get to that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, House of Mystery. We've done a House of Mystery previously on the show. I think this, uh, your first October, I think you may have picked a House of Mystery, maybe. Yeah, wasn't that the one? Um, let me just with check the, my list here. With a Dracula well, or something? Or? I believe, yes, I Vampire, you mean. Yeah, something like that. Right. But uh, anyway, uh, this House of Mystery, uh, just to recap for the kids who don't understand, I think this came out, this, this book's very old. It came out in like... Uh, you know, 52. The it, it started yeah. in 52, yeah. And then when they were cracking down on the horror stuff for a while, they remember when, uh, Congress got involved and everything, and the comics mm-hmm. code and everything. So they, they switched to sci-fi stuff and space monkeys and things like that. And then they introduced a couple superhero stories after that. Uh, Dow H for Hero, right, started in this. Oh, did it? Okay. I believe so, yeah. And that Martian Manhunter fella... He didn't start in these pages, but he had his own uh, run in uh, House of Mystery. Oh, nice. In the 60s there. And then uh, I think it was in 1968, uh, they brought it back to its roots then uh, with issue 175, if I'm remembering mm. all this properly because I didn't take notes. Uh, but they, they started going back to the horror stories then. And that's when that gotcha. fella K- Kane made his debut. They have this okay. guy named Kane, who is like the narrator of all the stories. Yes. And that started with issue 175, and then I think the series itself ran for 321 issues, all told. Right. That's a hell of a run. I think it ended in around 1982, I believe. That's right. Yes, around, around there. Now, before we continue, you you do know that DC also has an Able, right? Yeah, I think we talked about this four years ago uh, when we did this, but uh, okay. yeah, there's a Kane and an Able, and what is it? Able does House of... Specialist? Yeah, what, Abel what does. Hmm, I'm looking it up right now. Because they have a House a- of Mystery, a House, he does of, house uh, of Secrets. House of Secrets. Yeah. <laughs> God bless DC. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, this is a horror anthology. So mm-hmm. each issue has uh, several stories, and they're all spooky and whatnot. But Mike L, the big question I had after reading this mm-hmm. was why. Why? Why <laughs> did we read this? Because hey, so, I told you. so like, what made you choose this issue? Oh, because I like to go by what the critics like, okay? And the critics... so you're telling me critics actually said that this specific issue, yes, not not the title in general, this specific issue, this yes, number two ninety four. Is that what it is? Uh, let me do yeah. yep, two ninety four. Yep. Of July, what year is this again? This July is eighty two, uh, eighty one, eighty one, eighty one. Okay. So, yeah, we're getting close to the end of the run then. Um, yeah. Just a year or so left. All right, so critics said this was good. You got you, you heard that right. So, yes, I basically found a list, and this <laughs> was on the list near the top, and this is why I picked it. That's why I picked it. <laughs> Did they give a reasoning for why it's near uh, the top? You know, I'm trying to, in vain to find the article, and I can't, but somewhere it said that it was really scary. I just don't remember which... Story. Yeah, it wasn't really scary. None of this well, was we'll scary. We'll talk about this, this was, that later. Yeah. 
this is terrible. All right, so uh, that's the House of Mystery. Anything else we need to know about the House of Mystery before we get into uh, this? Well, only that Cain and Abel were later incorporated into Neil Gaiman's Sandman. <laughs> oh, good. Just and so they couldn't get worse. Whoa! <laughs> and they're currently <laughs> featured on the Sandman TV show. Oh, good Lord. There you go. Do you, yeah. you watch that Sandman TV show? But of course, and it's excellent. Oh, better really? Than, it's excellent. Well, I mean, at the very least, it's better than all the Marvel shows, that's for sure. <laughs> I'll dare you. <laughs> That's ridiculous. All yeah. right. So uh, now let's look at this cover, I guess. Um, do you enter the House of Mystery? That's I the big uh, tagline there at the top. Yes. And this is uh, the classic DC bullet that I grew up with. Do you enter, yes, the House of Mystery in like kind of horror font, right? Yeah. It's a nice like 1950s era horror font. Right. Yeah. Like kind of, I don't know what you'd call that, like scratchy, wavy. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah. And then we have a really good cover by Mike Kaluta here. We have a little kid, like, in his bed, and he's got the covers. He's trying to put the covers over his face, but there's a shadow of, like, a demon creature kind of, like, hovering over him, and he's his eyes are wide because he's scared. And this is a really well-drawn cover. Uh, well, I don't know if... I, I couldn't tell if it's a boy or a girl. It just looks like a kid. True, I thought it was a girl yeah. first, but then the story's about a boy, so... Yeah, uh, I, I, I just confused. think it'd be a boy or a girl. Uh, but yeah, I saw last week when we were uh, finishing up the show, and I looked at the cover for a second. I almost thought it was like a McFarland, just the way because I saw the signature there, and then I was sure. like, "Wait, what, what the hell? This can't be McFarland." And then it's Mike Kaluta. So, what do we know about Mike Kaluta? Uh, I don't remember. I mean, I know that I like him. I know he's famous, but I don't remember what he's famous for. But I can quickly. I'm. I'm assuming in your research you found out what he did. No, I, right? I didn't. I didn't research any of this. Okay, well let's see here. He drew the shadow in the '70s. Oh, look at this. Oh. He did House of Mystery, uh, Conan, a lot of DC. Um, yeah, basically just various DC comics, Vertical comics. He's kind of been around forever. It, he's clearly in the uh, Michael Golden, McFarlane, Arthur Adams vein. Kind of, yeah. But like if it. you saw his art, he's more realistic than they are. For sure. Okay. Yeah, he just, just from this, this picture. I'm just yeah, looking at similar, the line work on this picture. Yeah, similar line work for sure, but more realistic for sure. All right. Yeah, because I have no history with him whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Yeah, and you mentioned the little yellow thing at the bottom there. There is something lurking in the darkness. And I actually didn't mention that, but yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there it is. And it's coming your way. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there's a blurb at the bottom there in a yellow box. Uh, the little kid's got a stuffed elephant. That elephant looks cool. See this, see yeah, that? it's very cool. Yeah, and um, there's like again, you mentioned it's a bit like McFarland. It, like it's it's not really there's not a lot of shadows or feathering. It's more lines, but it's very nicely yeah, the, drawn, like textures and stuff. And uh, you know, there's like a little yeah, like a stuffed elephant, and there's like the the curtains are really well done. Yeah, it's a great cover. I love it. All right, it's okay. I'm, I don't love it, but it's <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Um, all right, so there it is. That's the cover. Fifty cents is what we're paying here for this house yeah. of mystery. That seems like a ripoff. But, uh, and then at the top it, it says, up. all new. Right, I'm in. All new. Yeah. Okay. So then we get a big splash page here of Kane on a boat. Yes. And I should point out that this splash page is by Joe Brzozowski, Brzozowski yeah. who didn't draw anything else in this book, which is an odd, you know. Yeah, it, this thing. art in this page looks almost like from the 60s. Like it's heavy Definitely. inked. And, and now uh, he's on a boat. Like he's sitting on the the front of it there, and he's talking to the reader, saying, uh, "You know, we're going to get into some spooky stories here, or whatever." Right. And and there's some like uh, demons, like flying monkeys, over top of them. Right. And, and then there's like a, a looks like a lizard coming out of that ship. Yeah. Now, is, that, okay. is that his pet or something? I don't know. You know, I know a lot about DC. I just don't know a lot about the horror title, so I have no idea. I'm assuming yeah, it's just a random. No, I think he's supposed to have like a little pet or something. Uh. Because uh, mm -hmm. I, I did see the final issue of the series, the cover, and it's him and a green lizard-like thing oh, leaving, and it's uh, him and his buddy are like, <clears throat> moving out. Of Actually, the house you know, in the Sandman car uh, TV show, I believe one of them has a pet dragon. So yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, that's probably him then. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember what the little pet dragon's name is. But anyway, um, so yeah, he introduces us. I, I don't know. Does he say anything important here? Ahoy, me horror hungry mates. I'm Kane, your haunting host and fiendish ferryman, mm -hmm. here to escort you up the river to visit a small circle of friends. An infernal bunch of devils, if I do say so myself. And then he keeps going on and on and on. Uh, so, yeah. All right. So then the next pic uh, the next uh, page there, Mike, uh, we start our first story. Yes. And are we going to talk about the creators here? Are we talk about them at the end? What's going on here? I don't remember how yeah, the we'll show goes. We'll talk about them each as we go <laughs> along here. I'll just uh, mention... Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll mention who they are. So this is Jerry Conway, who we talk about <laughs> all the time on this show. Yeah, and who I used to like until I started doing this show. And now oh, like, holy fuck. Ooh. What is going on, and, Jerry? And then Carmine Infantino. Who... Yeah, Infantino, uh, he, he's kind of hit or miss a lot, you know? Yeah. Uh, this, I mean, here's the thing. We should point out the inks are by John Beatty. Who I know from inking Mike Zach and John Beatty's inks really improve this art. I think they really. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, th- this <laughs> we we've seen some Carmine Infantino that is horrible. Yeah, and then we've seen some Carmine Infantino that's uh, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. this is definitely. I think this is definitely pretty good. It's polished. Yeah, it's okay. I don't think it's the best Carmine Infantino I've no. ever seen or anything. Well, know. the weird thing about him, I mean, just looking at the splash page his perspective is wacky like I, I mean i guess if you're not going for realism it's fine but it definitely looks like realism just out the window which i guess is fine especially since he started in the 50s right and that was kind of the style of the day but whatever so anyway so let's get to the story right yeah because it's a beauty right yeah i can't wait to talk about it for an hour anyway okay so then anyway we talk <laughs> we're introduced to a character named montgomery craig and it says here he has two distinct characteristics. One is that he's completely like unfeeling and ruthless in business. And then we f- we see this guy like okay, so he's like a businessman. He's like standing there uh, smoking a cigar, all cool. And then we see a guy who's being restrained by two security guards, and he's yelling at this guy, saying, "You ruined me with your stock manipulations, Craig. I hope you burn in Hades," which is the comic book word for hell, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Common they, word for hell. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought they yeah. DC invented it, but anyway. So, so basically, so the guy's like yelling at him, "You stinking lousy, whatever." And the guy's like, "Yeah, whatevs. You know, get out of here, whatever." He doesn't care, right? He's like, "Okay, well, anyway." He talks to like his, you know, not his butler, but like his assistant. He's like, "Okay, I'm going home. Yeah. See ya." So he gets into like a limousine, and uh, and then he's driving home, and then they mention somewhere in here that he is other fear that he has is that he has a fear of the dark, right? So yeah. He, so when he goes home, he has lights on everywhere. Yeah, like he, he steps into his like house and it's completely lit up. And then there's this cool little effect where he turns on the lights and there's all these like, little sparkles like showing where everything's lit up. And then he's walking through like his living room or whatever and it's all like blazing lights everywhere, right? And it's so, you can see that he's actually sweat. Oh, well, he's sweating. It says... He pours himself a drink in celebration and as every night breaks into a cold sweat as he remembers. And then we flash back to find out why he's afraid of the dark, right? So then we get past our uh, bubble yum advertisement (laughs) and we flash back to Haiti in the 1930s. And we see him as a little kid running around with his mother in Haiti. And then um, he just decides to take off on his mother and his mother's calling after him, but he just ignores her and leaves. Yeah, the reason they're in Haiti, uh, he, he's a white fella, and his yes, family's a, a rich white family. Right. And I, for, I forget what they said. His dad is some international businessman or Embassy. something. Yeah, he's a yeah, Embassy. dignitary. Yeah, so they're down in Haiti just, you know, whatever. Chilling. And, uh, and he's, he's running around like a spoiled little brat. Right. He, that's what he's doing. So then he runs away, and he finds himself in like a shop. And he's like looking around at all this stuff. And then he says to himself, voodoo. And we see all this voodoo-esque type things like skulls and stuff like that in this little shop. And um, he's like continues to look around. And we see um, like these faces kind of like, I don't know what they are, but they're kind of like suspended in the air. It's all like darkness, right? We see yeah, I think faces. they're like shrunken heads or whatever. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, what yeah. Is? So then we see a like Haitian woman sitting there. And she's speaking in like a Haitian accent. Well, you know, what you do here, child, I'm not going to do it. But she, she calls herself Mother Juju. She's like, Mother Juju, ask a question. She specs an answer, child. What do you do here? And he's rude to her. He's like, what business is it of yours? And so she's like, hmm, okay. This is my so, house. You just walk into my house. This is right. why it's my business. Yeah. Right, right. So then, um, and then he's basically like, uh, he he like reaches down and he sees this thing there. And he grabs it and he's like, dirty old woman, if I want it, I'll take it. So it's like this yeah. little neck, w- necklace with a little like, I don't know it what It's like that a is. fang on it, like a tooth. Like a f- oh yeah, a fang. I thought it was a horn, but you're right, it's a fang. Um, and then the old woman, see this is a great shot. The close up of the woman's face, all the shadow. She's like, he expected the old woman to cry out, but she didn't. Looking back, he saw her in the shadows and she seemed almost sad, right? Yeah, because she knows this kid's in trouble. He just stole right. that cursed uh, relic there. So, yeah. Right. So then he's back at home in like his mansion in the States. 
And then he's looking at this fanged thing and he's like, junk, crummy, cheap voodoo junk. And he throws it on the ground and then he tries to go to sleep. But then all of a sudden in the silence, in the darkness, you basically see kind of like the darkness becomes like a hand and it touches his foot. And then he begins to scream, right? And then it cuts back to the modern day and then he's pouring himself a drink. And then the narration's like, and from that night on, he always slept with the light. So he was basically scared of the dark because the darkness comes to life and, like, you know, tries to hurt him. So he's, like, flashing back. He's still, like, thinking about the Mother Juju. But then all of a sudden, he's sitting there chilling out. And all of a sudden, the lights go out. He's like, until today, he survived and survived in style. Until today, until tonight, the lights go out. The lights, what happened to the lights? He's, like, looking around, doesn't know what's going on. And he's like, and then he starts walking. He's like, 45 years of nightly terror are heavy burden for any man's heart to bear. And he's like walking, walking. And then all of a sudden, he's so scared that his heart stops. And he falls over and he smashes through a like, uh, what's it called? Like a glass uh, coffee table. But then all of a sudden, the lights turn on. And we see that it's the dude from the beginning of the story who he screwed over in this like no, stock. No, 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 no. It's not the dude huh? who screwed over. It's his it's assistant. Not? It's his assistant. Oh, I thought it was the guy from the beginning that he screwed no, no, over. No, no. Ah. It's his assistant because he knew about the uh, the weakness that he has for the darkness. Ah, so he, okay. He's going to take over the company now since he's dead. He's okay. Like, oh, I'll take over the company now. Yeah. Right. But little twist here. He, so he's all dressed in black, right? He yeah. takes off his mask and he's like gloating about how smart he is. And then he's like, all of a sudden, what? The lights go. He's like, what happened to the lights? I replaced the fuse. I pulled the lights. The, the lights should be on. So dark, I can't. And then he screams, E. And then the narration says, and something in the darkness bit Kingly in two. There you go. The Scariest end. story ever <laughs> written. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? How is that? Not a good story. <laughs> no. like So I don't understand how anyone could read this and think, oh, yeah, we got to put this on a list of the greatest scary story. What? I don't know. Maybe this wasn't the, the one they meant. I don't know. <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> it's horrible. It's well, the thing is. is, too, is that... Okay, fine. I can understand the point they were going for, but wouldn't it have been nice to see this darkness, <laughs> you know, do something to him instead of just narrate it? Yeah. It would have been, would have been, anything would have been better than what it was. Just It uh -huh. ended just so abruptly, you know? It just right. out of nowhere. Like, oh, okay. He got bit in half. All right. Right. And not. the funny thing is, is considering today how stories are spread out over, like, six issues, it's funny that they would force three or four stories into one issue when this probably could have been improved by, you know, expanding it a little bit. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, uh, I doubt it. All right, so next up, Whew. we have a story okay. called Old Haunt. Ah, uh, yes. This Old is probably Haunt. the one they meant. But it's not scary, though. Well, we'll get to that. So, right. this is written by Bruce Jones, who, uh, he wrote Kazar for Marvel. He came back in the 2000s, and he did um, Captain America... Um, he did the Hulk, Return of the Monster, all that kind of stuff. He's actually a really good writer. So this is a so this story is basically. Well, who, who's the artist here? Oh, sorry, the artist is Tom Yates. I'm not Yates. sure what he's done, but you, I'm sure you again in your research you can. No, nope, didn't do any research on this. Oh, look at that! You take Shocktober so seriously, you didn't do any research <laughs> on Tom Yates or Yates. So he is an artist who did Prince Valiant and Zorro and a bunch of other things. So anyway, so this guy is living in this old house. And uh, like this old kind of like... It doesn't... Even, I, it sounds like he's not even living there. It sounds like he's just visiting it at times, right? Like it doesn't say... Uh, oh, wait. He had inherited a Harrow house from a long line of ancestors. Mm. All right. I guess he is living there. Yeah. Uh, so he's, for 80 years. It might stand for 80 more vacant. Right. Okay. So it's like this old vacant cobwebbed house. But uh, he just goes... And uh, hangs out in the one bedroom, I guess, because he heard that someone killed himself in that room at one point. So, right, right, right. So he's chilling there, and all of a sudden, he sees this light from the hallway, and this person walks in, and it's a beautiful blonde woman holding a candle. And he just is starting to talk to her. He gets her name, Gretchen, and then he wants to keep talking to her, but then she disappears, right? Just disappears down the hallway. And when he goes into the hallway, she's completely <laughs> gone. Yeah. So then... What happens is then they, the narr the narration explains how she comes back pretty much every night and they sit and talk for a little while, but then eventually she just vanishes. She just gets up and vanishes, right? Yeah. So then um, finally, you know, she starts to explain more and she's like, well, 
this is what happened with me. Um, basically, she's like, I, f I came home one day and found my husband with another woman. And they flash back. They show her driving home. They come in. Um, she walks into the door and she sees her husband. She has blonde hair. She sees her brown-haired husband with a black-haired woman on uh, a couch. And again, we talked about how the horror comics tend to be a little bit racier. This woman has her kind of like sleeve you know, hanging down the bottom of her shoulder. So the, we the see strap of her dress. Yeah, the yeah, strap of her dress. Yeah, yeah. We see a little skin there. I mean, it's a really small picture, but still, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> so um, anyway, so then Gretchen is so upset that she reaches into her handbag, pulls out a gun, and doesn't shoot him. She yeah. shoots herself in the head, right? <laughs> that was very dramatic. She yeah. Out the boom. Shoots right now. Falls over, and then we see her laying in front of the fire. And she's like, I lay there watching the orange and yellow flames, listening to the crackling and popping, knowing that life was over for me. Everything went dark. And then the guy's like, well, interesting story, but somehow I can't quite believe you're really a ghost. And she's like, you don't believe in ghosts? So then um, they're talking, talking. And then all of a sudden he turns around and she's gone again, right? So you're like, huh, what's going on here? So then, um, so then, she, so then he's kind of waiting again one night. Oh, no, so then they're talking again. She disappears. And then finally one night, he, uh, it's like the narration's like uh, the frail figure uh, at times the frail figure would lean forward anxious anxiously as he detailed a lovely autumn meadow or a bluebird airwing across the country's sunset but always in the end she retreated to the hallway and vanished so then we see he's like okay now I got a plan I've got to get through to her somehow so then yeah, he, he says, he's trying to convince her that uh, she needs to live her life right right he, right he doesn't believe she's a ghost even though, you know, that's what the story wants you to believe, that she's a ghost and he's right. uh, trying to, uh, So he's trying to say, no, 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 you're not dead. You're a living woman. Uh, uh, right. Enjoy life. So he's painting these all, he's, he's describing all these beautiful things in the world and that uh, she should be enjoying because she's a living woman. Yeah. Right. So then finally one night he, it's like the narrator's like moving up the stairs hall. He, he began feeling along the wall in the dark here carefully until he discovered an almost indiscernible hairline crack. And then he opens up this little like, doorway and sure enough the woman is sitting in there right and then he's like okay come out now gretchen there's no need to hide any longer and then moments later in the kitchen oh, 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 oh i huh? think the kitchen thing happened first right no yeah because no, he, he finds what he's looking for right and then he goes and gets her because then he says i i know what i found so then he takes her down to the kitchen well no, that's what i mean yeah yeah so he but it, when when we when we see him looking and he finds the crack him opening that is where she's hiding then Correct. they go down to the kitchen. No, no, no. He was already in the kitchen, though. See, because he, he found... Oh, I see. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. There's I a gotcha. key clue that he finds in the yes. kitchen. So, so he's in the kitchen, and he opens up one of the cabinets, uh -huh. and there's food in there. And mm -hmm. he's like, see, I knew it. She's not right. a ghost. Ghosts don't eat. Yes. So she's a woman. Yes. So, so then he the goes kitchen. and finds her with the door cracked open, and he gets her, and he says, hey, we've got to go down to the kitchen. Come to the right. kitchen with me. And then he shows her the food there. And she's like, hey, and he grabs her arm and he's yanking on her arm. And he's like, hey, lady, you're a real lady. You're not a ghost. Right. You know? And uh, and he's like, tell me the truth. He's getting a little rough with her here, Mike. Yeah, I know. He's getting a little so rough. So then, yeah, so he's like wrestling her down. And then he's like, that is the way it happened at all. He's talking about her flashback. Let's go back, shall we, Gretchen? Let's go back to that night and remember the way it really was. And then we see um, a guy coming home in the same car. So this is like the other flashback, but it's different. Now it's a guy coming home, got off a little early. Oh my God, Gretchen, how could you? So then we see that Gretchen is actually the one that cheated on her husband. Yeah, and, and the, the sequence is laid out in the exact same like panel. Right, uh, right, right. Every, every panel's the same, except now there's a guy coming back instead of, right. you know, yeah. Right, so and well so, so this guy, yeah, so this guy's like, my wife and my best friend. Brad, don't be a fool. So this guy, in, the, in this version, pulls out a gun and shoots the guy, which is Phil. Yeah. Um, it, it and then he's like, it's only a flesh wound. <laughs> Stop him, Gretchen. This is where the, the, the story goes a little off the rails, so to speak. <laughs> she bit. runs after him, gets into a car. They're both in the car. They're driving away. And then they come to a bridge. And they skid off the bridge. And then... Um, the car like tumbles over the edge of the bridge, but then she kind of like gets thrown out and lands on the ground. And then she's like, I lay there watching the orange and yellow flames, listening to the crackling and popping. So that's like, a, you know, mirroring the early version, the earlier version, except now it's because she's laying outside and watching the car burn, right? 
Yeah, instead of being in front of the fireplace in the uh, in the room there, she's in front of the fire, has her husband burns in a car. Right, right, right. Yeah. So then she's like, I fainted, hidden there in the underbush. Underbush. Everyone in town, so basically everyone in town thought she died, right? But she just kept yeah. on living uh, in this house. And then he's like giving her advice. You got to stop blaming yourself. You got to live your life, blah, blah, blah. So then they go down to um, like a, the graveyard that's nearby. And then he's like, oh, it'll be light soon. I must leave you now. Go, sweet Gretchen. Go into the world and find a new love, a new life. And she's like, oh, Judd, you're right. It's lovely. L- leave me, Judd. Judd, he's gone, vanished. I-, I don't understand. Where could he have got to? Dear God. She looks down. <gasps> we see a tombstone for Judd Herschel. So yeah. it turns out he was the one that was dead the whole time. And then it yeah. says, the cemetery was deathly still. Beckoning rays of sunlight fell upon a single granite stone before her. The end. What a twist ending, right, Mike Dell? Uh, well, I, I, yeah, I mean, you could see it coming on Broadway the whole time, right? Anyway. I mean, you obviously knew this was going to happen. But, uh, yeah, uh, this was the best of the stories in this issue. Yes. But there, it could have used some smoothing out. There was some, well, the, uh, the yeah. car thing threw it off. Like, the car thing was very awkward. Like, they could have done that whole scene and just had it in, like, in the living room, right? Yeah. Uh, that would have just, just the whole bit about him, uh, her always disappearing, and she just vanished. And uh, he's a ghost, and uh, they're trying to play into the fact that, you know, he he's a real guy, and she's the ghost, because she just vanishes. If for right. somehow, he, why was she just vanished? Why couldn't he see her then when she would leave? That was weird. And then when at the end there, he's grabbing her by the arms and yanking her around. Uh, mm-hmm. Can ghosts do that? Can ghosts uh, grab well, you? Well, and... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Wait, what so, was that? Oh, that was, was a that was an ad with music. Uh. But anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, there you go. I, li- I thought the art was pretty solid. I like the art in this. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, the art was very, you know, like realistic and modern looking. I thought it was good. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely like that, for sure. Yeah, this is like, you're right, this is the best of the bunch, and this is kind of more of what I was hoping for from this issue, you know? Yeah, it's a spooky ghost story. You yeah. Know? yeah. But I, I don't think it should be anywhere near a best of list or anything. Well, you know? that's debatable, that's debatable. But hey, maybe this next story is actually the one that's the scariest of all time. So well, before we get to the next story, oh. it's kind of like a little cartoon thing, right? Oh, that's Just what I one. meant, is the scariest uh, story, but... Uh. <laughs> so yeah, it, this is basically... So uh, this is Kane, uh, and it's kind of like a little, you know, like a cartoon strip. And so Kane is leaning out. It, the it's window. called Kane's Game Room. Right. That's the. It's like a one-page uh, comic. Yeah, like a yeah. gag strip, and he's like leaning out the window of his house, and he's talking to this witch that's flying, kind of by, flying by, and he's like, "Hey Hazel, how's the work in your house coming along?" And she's like, "Just finished. Hop on. I'll take you over to see it." So he jumps on her broomstick. They fly. It's about time you did something with that shack you lived in. And then they get there, and it looks like this fairly big, almost like castle. And he's like, it's magnificent. And then we cut to behind the house, and we see that it's still this tiny little shack with this just this facade of like a castle in front of it. And then Kane looks at the witch and says, even if the interior does leave just a little bit to be desired. The end. Hilarious. Yeah. All right, on to the next story. Okay, so we should point out... <laughs> this is the worst story, right? This or is... I, I, is this the worst story? I don't know. Uh, well, here's the thing. We should say quickly, this is drawn or written by Paul Kupperberg, and it's drawn by George Tuska and Tony... Yeah, I, I like George Tuska. Yes, Dizanuga. Now, we should point out, not only is this art really good, does this writer and art team... Does this bring back any memories for you? Because we've reviewed a comic done this by this exact C- creative Cumberberg team. and Tuska. Yes. I like Tuska. He's old school, like a uh, good classic artist here. But uh, I think the inks are a little too heavy in this myself. Well, okay. That's yeah. neither here nor there. Yeah. But here's the thing. Uh, they did He-Man. The DC He-Man. Oh, no shit. Yeah, yeah. that's right. The, like the, uh, wait, the first one or the second one? The, the DC one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the The first one in uh, in uh, chronological order, but the second one that we did. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about that? He yeah. man, and now this. Uh, yeah, this story. It's uh, well, I don't know. It's well, we'll okay. get to that. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> so basically, this story is weird. So this guy is like walking around in a hospital, smoking a cigarette as one does in a hospital, and. Um, 
we see him go into like a delivery room and we see the title of the book congratulations mr base mr bates it's a warlock so this guy has just had a baby and it's a well his wife has had a baby and it's a warlock which for those who don't know is a male witch and one they're thing both like, witches they're both witches yes, yeah. yes they're this guy's a witch and his wife is a witch and I want to point out that the story is narrated by Kane. He's actually like in the panels, like looking at the reader. You know, it's kind of cool. I like it. It's almost like uh, Rod Serling. Yeah, but. they'd have a little floating head sometimes. And then sometimes right. he'd also be a character like uh, just in the background. Yes, uh, I like that. I think that's cool. Yeah. But we'll get to that. So basically, um, he is now in like the, um, the, the hospital bed, like not the room, talking to his wife. And he's like, oh, mural, mural, Muriel, he's a beautiful baby, you know, all the cliches. And then basically um, a, a doctor comes in and says, ah, yes, the tests have all come back positive. Your son is definitely a witch. Now, I don't know what tests they, you know, have to prove he's a witch, <laughs> but whatever. They use them, right? Yeah. And apparently the father's like, by Gargotha. Is it Sargotha or Gar Sargotha? <laughs> I have no idea. I was afraid of that. So the father is not happy that his um, son is actually going to be a witch, right? So then the narrator's like, no, John Bates was far from happy of this turn of genetic events. So then he's like, I lived in fear that our child would inherit Muriel's and my powers. And then I like this. We see Kane in the foreground kind of giving the thumb like, can you believe this guy? You know, like pointing at the protagonist. Don't you think it would have been better if like he if this was a bewitched situation where uh, she was a witch and he was just a mortal man? And, and yeah. Then he was because it makes no sense. Like, why would he be so... He's trying to say, oh, because uh, we're, we're ostracized because we're warlocks and whatnot. Well, whatever. It seems weird. Yeah, um, that's a good yeah. point. That's a good point. Mm. So basically, he's kind of like mulling this over. Like, what should I do? What should I do? I don't want our son to be a witch. I want him to have a normal life. So then he uh, he goes and gets a lawyer, right? Is this a lawyer? I don't <laughs> yes. remember. He, he gets, gets a an lawyer. injunction. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, because if, to become an official warlock witch person the baby has to go through a ceremony right so he, he's getting his attorney buddy to say hey he you can't uh you do can't the ceremony teach with him my to be witch, right yeah yeah he, he so that's he gets legal paperwork <laughs> to as one does so then he comes back into the hot to the delivery room like the mother's with the baby and he's like oh wait forget it it's not gonna happen You're, he's not gonna be a witch and she's like john what are you talking about and he's like i'm talking about our son's happiness so basically, yeah, this is where they show him the injunction, but she actually waves her hands and lights the like legal paperwork on fire, right? Because she's a witch. <laughs> yeah. And I also like how she's in the hospital. She just gave birth to a baby and uh, she's in like an evening gown, uh, right, bracelets, and has earrings, earrings. On. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Yep. <laughs> um, so anyway, so yeah, the paper's burning. And then the guy's like, I've been mixed up with witchcraft my whole life, basically. And he's like, he doesn't want this for his son, right? So then he's like, okay, well, whatever. And so then they're walking away. And then the lawyer's like, how did she do that, John? And he's like, I told you, Bill, she's a witch. And he's like, yeah, but I thought you were kidding. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> um, so then they cut over to now they're actually going to court. And I like yeah. this. The guy who's actually uh, testifying is Kane. I think that's great. Well, he's not testifying. He's the bailiff. Oh, he's the bailiff. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. He, calling, he's, yeah, calling, right, Bates, calling versus Bates. Bates versus Bates are all parties present, and then uh, and then basically, you know, it's kind of, it's almost like a well, yeah, it's like a, it's a legal proceeding between the the father and son about what they're gonna do with the kid, and um, back you know back and forth, you know, he's like goes on the on the stand and says that he's a witch, and then later on they have this woman on that looks more like a stereotypical witch. She has like yeah. hair growing out of her chin, right? Yeah. And um, and he's like, uh, the witch is like, well, the Bates baby has the most powerful ma magic aura I've ever seen in a man or child. And then the lawyer's like, hmm, I see, dear woman, right? So they're going back and forth. And then um, and then basically, uh, so then Mir Muriel comes, and then uh, what's the whatever the guy's name is? Oh, John. He's like, Muriel, what what the devil are you doing with the baby here? And, he, and she's like, well, there's something I have to say to you, John. And then they go out in the hallway and she's like, you know, we never, there's someone we never thought to ask about this whole situation. And he's like, who? The baby, John. We never thought to ask him about he, how he felt about this. And we see the baby has like this evil look on his face. Yeah. And he like, and he like gestures with his hand. We don't know what's going on. And then all of a sudden, um, 
we see the lawyer uh, come in from the other room. But he's like, good lord, that scream, Muriel. Where's John? Why, John left Bill. And then we see the kid holding a little, like, um, teddy bear. But the teddy bear has the same tie that John had on. Yeah. Which means that the little kid turned John into a teddy bear. Yeah. The, the end. end. That's what now, I call scary, Mike Dell. Now, Mike, yeah, when I was uh, f- reading this for the first time, I was kind of like panning down to the bottom of the page there, and I noticed that the baby, they draw the baby with blonde hair, all right? Yes. So then uh, the the lawyer has blonde hair. Okay. So so when I just like was panning down and I, I saw those panels, I'm like, oh, wait, she's going to call him in and say, hey, guess what? You're not the dad. I fucked the lawyer. He's the <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Not but, uh, quite. Yeah, instead he turns into a teddy bear. I'll, I'll say this: uh, Muriel, the uh, the mom here, smoking hot. George Tuska did a really oh, good yeah. job. Yeah, <laughs> did a great job of drawing her throughout yes. this whole thing. Uh, yeah, the art here is nice. The story is just a complete waste of time. <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, well, see, I, I think I know what they're going for. It's like it's almost like you know finding uh, out there's something wrong with your kid or there's whatever. There's some kind of something you've passed on. But like you said, that's a good point that. It, it would have been better if she had it and he wasn't a witch, like the yeah. father. But yeah, or, the whole thing. Doesn't or work. if he, or if they had an, if the kid wasn't a witch, and and he wanted to uh, do the ceremony, to try to make him a witch. And, That's and a good point. That would be a, a way of doing it. And one of them says, "No, no, no, don't let let him live as a mortal." But yeah, you think they would both want a witch child? I I don't know. It's just weird. Yeah. And, and then there's about three pages where it's just the trial. And mm. none of it is exciting or interesting. It's just boring. No, no, it's just <laughs> filling pages. Yeah, it's just filling pages. Uh, it's but I, I like Tosca though. The arts are really good. Like the uh, art's I, I like his stuff. He's just a he, he's in that uh, old school, like John Buscema school kind of yeah. not as dynamic or anything, but just like the figures and everything, the way they look. Um, Very realistic. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. So uh, there it is. That's that's it. That's the story. Yes. That's the book. Scariest comic book ever published. <laughs> Wow. I, I guess they really like that middle story, and, you know, that's fine, but it's pretty much a standard ghost story that you've heard a thousand times, right? Like yeah. The, the person who you think is not a ghost is a ghost. Oh, uh-huh. You could argue that, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is terrible. This is just awful. Ooh. Yeah. Not great. Not great. Uh, no. Don't, don't, don't um, read this. Yeah. Huh? No one should read this, right? Like, don't go read this. You can this. look at it for the art. Um, I guess, but just the last one, really. Well, I guess the middle one was okay, too. Yeah. Uh, Carmen Infantino, this is not his best work, but it's okay. It's pretty good. It's not his worst, either. It's like... No. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't... None of these stories worked, really. And, uh, so... I can't... uh, The middle one was okay, and I like Tosca. I'll go three, I guess. (laughs) Three. Maybe. Oh, That's man. That's very generous. Uh, just because Tuska did a good job drawing that lady there in the end. so she looked really If good. you're going by writing, yeah, it's a three. But if you're going by art, it's a seven. Oh, good Lord. So I guess, <laughs> okay, the lowest I can go is a five. It averages out to a five. How's that? <laughs> All right. I lowest suppose. I can go. I suppose. Uh, there it is, House of Mystery. All right. Uh, let, let's yeah. never go back to that house. We've been Shot-tober. to that house twice already. Let's not go back to that house. Uh, we'll again. see. We'll see what happens. All right. So next week, uh, Shaw October continues. Oh, nice. Our, our, <laughs> I think you're surprised by that. <laughs> <laughs> our buddy Bob Myers is going to be joining us. Ah, cool. Yes. And I let Bob pick the issue. Oh, and, there you go. And Bob picked Chamber of Darkness. Ooh. Issue four. This is a Marvel book. This is from, uh, I think, July of 1970. So this is the earliest book we've ever done on the show. Uh, Whoa, it, interesting. It, it's basically the same thing as this that we just read here today. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's a horror anthology with three stories, and uh, it's more of the same. I'll put it that way. But I think uh, a couple of highlights. The first story is written and drawn by Jack Kirby. Ah, nice. So that's always something to watch. And then uh, the final story was drawn by a young Barry Windsor Smith. Before Whoa. he even had the Windsor, he was just Barry Smith. Nice. So yeah, that should be fun. So there you I'm go. looking That's it up right now. Hold on a sec here. So you've looked at this already? I actually read it already because oh. I was confused because I had been talking to Bob about it. And I got confused about what I should have been reading. So I read that thinking that's the issue we were doing today. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, shit. I have to read that House of Mystery, too. So then I had to go back and read House of Mystery. So, yeah, I, I read this issue before House of Mystery, actually. Okay. <laughs> so, spoiler. You can't spoil it, but I but I guess you already know if it's good or not, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> we'll, leave it, we'll leave it at that. The cover looks good, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't know who drew that cover. Was it, uh... Mm. I'm not sure, yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah, there you go. So look at that. Shocktober continues, right? On uh, Flea Market Fantasy, every week we review a different Bronze Age comic. One week I pick. One week Mike Dell, Mike Dell picks. Sometimes Bob Myers picks, right? You never know. Oh, that's right. Um, you can find every episode of our show at www.comicbooksyndicate.com. And there's a new episode every Tuesday. So until next Tuesday, this is... Bye!